Welcome to the Dot is Black, I'm David. In this video I'd like to show you the new Alfaro laser engraver and cutter by Autor. I will introduce you to three different laser modules, its specifications and show you a few test engravings and laser cuttings. And right from the beginning I can already admit that I had actually quite a lot of fun testing and playing with it. And I also will show you more examples in the future definitely. There is plenty to see and plenty to do with it. So let's have a look first at the alferolaser.net website. On the Alfaro website you can go directly to Alfaro Laser Engraver and here you, can have, you already can see that you have three different options for the laser module. That particularly has to do with the laser power. So the first one is 1600 milliwatt, the second one is 5500 milliwatt short focus and also again 5500 milliwatt, milliwatt but long focus. And I will also talk about this in a few seconds more in detail what is the difference between short and long focus which is actually quite important if you want to choose one which one is the right one for your type of work. If you scroll down a little bit you would be more interested in the specifications especially the engraving area which is 180 by 180 millimeter also the engraving speed which is 5000 millimeter per minute up to basically depending on the type of material you use and the strength or the, the power and then of course the input format what kind of files you can use to engrave or cut. So it's using any type of raster images and also vector images. But this has more to do with the type of software, which I will also talk about. Now a little bit below, there is a comparison sheet where each of those laser modules is compared with each other. So you can see here the engraving speeds and also the cutting speeds depending on the type of material. This is actually a very good reference point to start with. So I personally was not able to achieve those fast, incredible, incredible fast values actually. Um, that had to do probably with the type of material I was using or maybe in their conditions. So maybe it had a certain coating that uh, was not in the laboratory when they were setting up those values. So this is a very optimistic, those are very optimistic values. But let's have a look up again and let's check the price. So I will select right now the short focus, I add it to my card and then I go check out. And once here, if you apply the discount code, the dot is black, you can get a 10% discount. Let's talk briefly about the unboxing. The first thing that you see is a manual with QR codes that direct you to the Alfero or or to a website where you would find video tutorials and other links. The box itself is tightly packed. There is more protective foam than actual components, which I think uh, is good. Additionally, once unpacked, so you will see all those different components. First of all, it's the machine, which is 315 by 422 millimeter wide. Then we have the USB cable, which is two meter long, great for a desktop. The power cable with an adapter, 24 volt, 2 ampere, but it's only 1.2 meter long, so perhaps you will need an extension cable. Additionally, there are some wooden plates and acrylic plates for uh, testing. We have the focal gouge, it's a metal rod, 50 millimeter high, then an anodized aluminum plate, black, to adjust the focus. A focal gouge, again, when uh, it's a board, or an acrylic board that is for one of those laser modules, then a brush to clean, a hex wrench, an angle fastener or angle fasteners and brackets to fix the laser engraver on the desk on a piece of wood. We have also here the thumb screw, an allen key and of course an air assist nozzle with pipes and valves for one of the laser modules again. We have also the protective covers, laser googles that which you should always wear and of course three different kinds of laser modules. When we look closer at the laser modules, we will find out that they are actually quite different. And the first one, the LU2-2, is a 7 watt laser with a power of 1600 milliwatt and a focal length of 50 millimeter. The second one is a short focus with 20 watt and maximum power of 5500 milliwatt and a focal length of 30 millimeter. And the last one is again a 20 watt laser module with 5500 milliwatt power or max power and a focal length of 50 millimeter. The focal length is perhaps the most important part of this laser besides of the power. So what is this focal length? Let me share with you a little diagram to explain you 
a bit more about how the laser actually works. So on the left hand side we have the short focus with a focal length of 30 mm for example and on the right hand side we have the long focus with a focal length of 50 mm for example. As you can see already in the diagrams they are quite different and the difference is the distance between the lens and the depth of focus. The depth of focus is where the spot diameter is occurring, where the laser is changing directions. So where the light is converging and then again diverging. The depth of focus determines how deep actually the laser can engrave or how deep the laser can cut at once. And the short focus, of course, has a much smaller depth of focus. That results in a poorer or less depth for cutting. But because of that, it has also a much higher power density. And this is very important for engraving. Whereas the long focus, it has a much larger depth of focus and therefore it can cut harder and thicker materials. So it is a rather a good balanced laser for and useful for most of the tasks. And, but you can also see, in general, the long focus has a much larger spot diameter. And we can see this in the diagram uh, offered by Ofero and Ortua. You can see the spot sizes, the laser spot sizes for each of those three laser modules. And the spot size relates directly to the tolerance, how far you can go up and down. So the margin of error. For the first one, the LU2-2, the 7 watt laser, the spot size is very tiny, very, very small, 0.07 by 0.06 millimeter. And it has a tolerance of plus minus 1.9 millimeter, which you can go up and down. The long focus, on the other hand, is as a, it has a much larger spot size. It is 0.17 by 0.25 millimeter. So the tolerance here is plus minus 3.1 millimeter. So you can have actually a very much, a very large margin of error and you therefore you can also and cut much thicker materials. And the short focus has more uh, laser spot size that is right now in between and it has a tolerance of plus minus 2.5 millimeter. So it is not only good for engraving, but also you can cut with it thinner materials, probably up to five millimeter. Now, if you'd like to know more about the focal length and also the uh, implications of it on engraving and laser cutting, I can highly recommend you the video by Make Stuff Now. Uh, I put the link in the description. You can also follow it, it's great. Uh, he nicely explains everything step by step and also show the examples how he engraves the piece of wood and how it looks like when the laser is out of focus. All right, I think I have covered all the essential parts. So let's plug in the USB cable, the power cable, and here you can also see the power button, which you press for a few seconds. Above it, there is the reset button. If you press it, everything is off instantly. Additionally, you can see here the angle fasteners, which you can use to attach the Aufero on a desk or any on a wooden plate. But you need them because you already have on each side three rubber pads and it's quite stable. The laser engraving area is extremely important. You don't want to accidentally burn or engrave or cut your desk. So in my case, I use a white coated metal plate, which is actually a magnet board. It's very cheap, you can buy it in any uh, supply store and that works perfect. For the installation of the software and the driver, you have to go back to the Alfaro website and you go into the download section, you scroll a little bit down and then you just go to number two where it says download the software here. You will be redirected to the auto .net website, which is the parent company of Aufero. And here you have the drivers, so you choose the one that is suitable for your operating system, mainly for Windows. Now, the software that you can edit images and you can engrave or cut them. You have two choices. One is the free software, Elaser GRBL, which is kind of good, it works very well. Or, uh, I personally prefer Lightburn. Uh, it offers you a 30 day free trial version. After that, you have to pay 60 US dollar. And this is what I will use for this review. Once you downloaded and installed Lightburn, if you open it up, the first thing that you need to do is set up your devices. So I press here on this button on the right hand side, D 
device and then find my laser next and there is already the laser I press OK and I give it the name Aufero the dimensions of the work area is the same 180 by 180 and the origin of the laser whether it's front left right left and so on I keep it on front left and finish okay the next thing you need to do is you have to go to the settings device settings and enable or turn on the laser fire button that's very important for the diode laser so we can actually also test and calibrate it the next thing is it's very important this part you go here to move and you have here the jogging so you can actually move the laser manually but it's more important for us this button fire button because with this button uh, we can calibrate so you will see this in a few seconds um, I will press the button to calibrate the laser on the black metal plate all right so now we are ready to attach the laser head on top of the machine first we need to take the acrylic plate and slide it on top of the cooler of the laser head the short focused laser has already an acrylic plate attached with magnets which is quite convenient because you can just pull it away or just it snaps simply back if you have done this take the laser head slide it on top of the machine and use the thumb screw to fix its position temporarily connect the cables don't forget the ground line which is the yellow cable connected to one of the screws in the corners you can use the provided allen key however in the case of the short focus laser the screwdriver is not included and you definitely will need one Next step, take the metal or acrylic gouge, place it underneath and lower the laser down until it touches it slightly. Do not apply any force. Fix the laser head with the machine with the thumb screw and remove the gouges. There should be actually no resistance or if, then only very little. If this is done, take the black anodized metallic plate and slide it underneath the laser head. Go back to your software and you can press the fire button. Now the laser should be on, you can test the spot diameter if everything is okay. Go back to your software and turn off the laser again by pressing the fire button. As a last step, place the acrylic plates in the proper position, remove the black metallic plate away and move the laser head into the corner of the machine and you're basically ready to start engraving and cutting. The long focus laser comes with an air assist nozzle for which you need an air compressor or an air pump but which I don't have at the moment so I did not include it therefore so, however I'd like to show you anyway how to attach the air nozzle first of all you take the allen key out and you detach the screw on the back side of the laser head so you can remove the metallic protector that surrounds the laser head actually the lens inside and with that you can take the air nozzle and plug it on top of it but be very careful don't bend it don't twist it just only put it on top of it very easily without any pressure and tension take a little screw and attach it don't tighten it too much because the air nozzle is supposed to still move around left and right basically it's supposed to rotate once you have done this then the rest of it are the smaller parts uh, that connect to the pipe so you just basically connect all the parts, parts with each other, also to the airflow regulator perhaps as well, but most important, attach it back to the air nozzle. But again, be very careful with the screwdriver. Do not place too much pressure on it or any, don't bend it. Just be very gently, gentle and carefully because there is the lens for the laser. Once this is done, just connect it to the air pump and that's it basically. Let's do some testing. The first test will be about engraving and I just put here the image inside into Lightburn and Apple with a white background. And if you don't know how it works with Lightburn, usually everything that you put inside becomes a new layer that has its own speed and power. And when you double click on it, you can also of course select other options. Most important for images, there, are, there is a particular image mode so you can kind of select thresholds, you can select um, for example also grayscale, sketchy parts or Stucky in this case. 
and I press OK, I keep it all the same settings, like standard settings, nothing special here. And if I want to look how it looks like in the uh, laser engraver, then I have to go to the preview or Alt plus P. And if I press it, then I can see more or less how it will look like, especially if I zoom in. That's how it is translated into the laser engraving. So this image I'm going to, I'm going to use now to, uh, for engraving, and I will use the same image for each laser head. Once I finished everything, you finish all the setup, then you just say start, and then it starts to engrave. You can see here the engraving process of the apple, and I juxtaposed the uh, three laser modules next to each other. The, uh, the power is at each of them at 100%. The only difference is the speed. The graphics and everything else is the same. And we can see already there are differences in terms of time. So the LU2-2 is quite slow, so it's a, it needs about twice as much time as the short focus, which is the high density laser beam. So let's jump uh, right to the results. The first one is the long focus laser. And you can see it's actually quite a nice quality. I wanted to have it a bit even more darker. However, what happens is that um, the laser is so powerful that it actually cut through the cardboard. It's a two millimeter cardboard. I know I should suppose to probably engrave on wood, but I do like to work actually with paper more. The same for the short focus. Um, it's slightly brighter. It doesn't have as much contrast as the long focus. And even it was the fastest one. However, the slowest one and the least powerful, actually the cheapest one, uh, produced uh, the best outcome. So when we look at them all together in this page, you can sense, I guess, that the first one is the best one and perhaps the third one with the long focus looks also great. In the middle is the short focus. So the short focus, of course, was too fast and maybe too much power at the same time. So, but nevertheless, it's a great example. It's a great, uh, it's a great uh, case. Let's test now a vector graphics, which I personally favor. I'd like to use the laser cutter uh, instead of a laser engraver, where I can use my vector graphics that I either export from processing or I use them from architecture like Rhino 3D or AutoCAD. And this is for me most useful because I like to work with layers. So I already have this randomly generated grid from processing, and it is on one layer. As you can see here, this is the output, and I have another layer, which is basically the frame around it, which I cut out later in the end. The power is at 100% for both of them and the speed is 1000 at this point. So everything is set up. I turn off the output here and the show and I just press start. So as you can see here, the laser started already to cut the paper, but the LU2-2 is rather too slow. It takes about 14.36 seconds to actually cut the entire pattern out of the paper, which definitely is a very long time, but it simply cannot do more than that. It has to be a 200 millimeter per minute speed, otherwise it doesn't cut everywhere equally the paper. On the other hand, the short focus laser 4SF has a speed of 1000 millimeter per minute and you can see in instantly there is an incredible increase of speed where the entire pattern to cut out takes only 3 minutes and 16 seconds. The last one, the long focus laser for LF, has the same speed and also of course the same power and it takes about exactly the same amount of time as the short focus laser. Another comparison of those three laser types, uh, you can see here at the end I'm cutting out the square around the pattern and again the LU2-2 has a speed of 200 millimeter and it takes to cut out a square 18 by 18 centimeter or 100, 180 by 180 millimeter, so basically the maximum size of the working area, it takes about three minutes and 38 seconds, which is incredible long. The short focus takes only 43 seconds with the same settings as before, and the long focus also 43 seconds. And that's definitely an improvement in terms of uh, speed. So I definitely prefer those two laser modules. Once it's finished, so I just lift it up basically and start to shake it a little bit so all the pieces falling out. Some pieces are a bit stuck, so I help myself, but it's an actually quite a nice work.
Now you can see the final outcome. Each of the layers is exactly the same. It was just only done with the different laser units, but they're actually perfectly accurate. And I do like to work with layers because I can rotate them, I can flip them, I can use different kinds of backgrounds, and they actually create some very nice unexpected generative outcomes, um, also with different kinds of depth, because something that usually a drawing cannot achieve, but with different layers that have also thicknesses, you can do quite a lot. And I think the laser cutter enhances this process. As the last thing of this video, I'd like to show you maybe a few other examples that I have been doing. This one, for example, is just another apple on a cardboard, so I cut a piece of it out. Uh, it's very nice, it's very easy to do it, and it was like about what, five or six millimeter cardboard. Another example is, again, uh, cut out on black paper. Black paper is actually quite easy to cut because it absorbs the laser almost instantly, so it can be super fast actually with black paper. The darker, the better always. And it's a beautiful composition with other colors, so I like these cutouts in the layers. And the last one, maybe there are a couple of other things, like I use very thick paper, like two or three millimeter that I cut with the laser also some engraving and also MDF, three millimeter MDF. So it works pretty well. I had no problems and yeah, it's kind of nice too. So I'm looking forward to actually what I can do with that. The conclusion, let's start first with the negative part. And there is not much actually, to be honest. The first thing that comes to my mind and that has so perhaps has to do with my own work. I find the working area of 18, 180 by 180 millimeter slightly too small. It's okay, it's fine, it's great for testing and it's very playful. It's definitely perfect for laser engraving. But if I work with laser cutting, I do wish it would have a much bigger working area. So at least like A4. And I think also it's, it should be possible because the frame is solid aluminum basically and it's extremely stable. So just a few centimeters on each side shouldn't have been a problem, especially in the X axis. So it could be quite, quite long, very long actually. So that would definitely be much better, but it's okay. Uh, it's not like, it's not like uh, if you buy it, so you know what you get actually. The another aspect that I find a bit uh, that could be better is the power cable. I find it slightly too short because the USB cable is two meter long, whereas the power cable is only 1.2 meter long. So I do prefer the power cable to be longer because sometimes the sockets are far away and I don't want to always use or carry with me an extension cable. And the last thing, negative part, perhaps uh, the documentation could be better. The documentation in regard of the long focus laser and especially how to make use of the air assist nozzle and what is the benefit of it? How, why should we use an air compressor? What kind of air compressor? Because there is actually literally almost no documentation except that there is maybe just one slide or one image where it says that we should use a, an air compressor but not much more. So that definitely would be better. But otherwise, uh, I don't have anything else to say about it. It's a very powerful laser. It's great. It's a plug and play device. So you just take it out of the box and you start playing with it. And it has this very solid frame. Nothing is moving. It's extremely practical and extremely easy to use. So there is the learning curve is extremely high. So you would have definitely a lot of fun with it, especially if you work with uh, drawing machines or you are a graphic designer or maybe you work with images in general. So this is a great tool for you because it enhances the creative process and enables new opportunities. So I definitely enjoy to work with it and I will also produce more work in the future and I will share with you. For example, this work that I also did, I like this very much. It's one based on a, my most favorite codes in processing. And I will upload the video also in the next day, so you can also watch this, uh, how I did that with the Alfero laser engraver. If you have any questions or I missed anything to review, or maybe I was not clear enough, please ask me in the comments and I will definitely reply to you. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and don't forget if you want to, if you want this laser engraver, you can use the coupon code, the dot is black and you get 10% off. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.